you very much indeed. Welcome back to Jeremy Carr Live. We told you to get in touch. One of the toughest men in telly in a minute uh, will be on. Uh, but first, that all your all your all your sort of messages and questions and at Jeremy Carr Live. What's the hashtag, Middleton? At yeah, JK Live. Fantastic. Now you can be quiet. <laughs> uh, this is from somebody called Swan. My partner and I are totally against 999 workers striking. It's totally unacceptable. They are a critical service that should be banned from striking. At Liz Trust, at Therese Coffee. There you go. Chris Edwards says. Great work at Talk TV, getting Jeremy Carr back on the television. JK has found his niche in life being Morgan's warm up. Anne Marie. I oh, know. Fluffer. Oh. Anne Marie Thompson, I'm here and waiting. Great to have you back on your TV show, Jess. Thank you very much indeed. <laughs> uh, this in from Peter. I've just heard Jeremy Carr telling Julia Hartley Brewer about his new show. Uh, I assume you'll be in it, and that's why I'll be watching. He then said he'll be playing some Game of Conkers later on. If that happens, I will switch over to Nigel Shab Farage. I don't know what his name is. I want news argument, debate, not conquers. Nigel what? Don't even know what you're talking about, mate. I've got him in my sights. Uh, striking nurses. Alan says, how can you stop nurses striking? They could just screw the job and leave. Who could stop them? All of your comments. It is at Jeremy Kyle Live, hashtag JK Live. So I've described this man as one of the toughest ever. Booted from the Channel 4 programme, SAS Who Dares Wins. By the way, the wife's favourite programme until he left. After claims that his views and his values were not aligned with their own, that's Channel 4 who said that. However, he claims the woke patrol have kicked into the point where we can't say anything. Joining me now is a legend. And Middleton, how are you, it's sir? Lovely to meet you. Oh, Jeremy, how are you? Blimey, O'Reilly, that's quite <laughs> off. Uh, I'm all right. So, listen, what are you here to promote? Your books? Am I just going yeah. to get that out of the way? Just my books and I'm gone. No, is I've it? got The Wall, which is out. It's the non-fiction. It's about smashing through self-doubt, but ultimately being honest with yourself, which uh, a lot of people struggle with nowadays. Yeah. Yeah. And this is my uh, fiction book, Red Mist. It's the sequel to Cold Justice, and that's out at the end of November. Right, OK, there we've done go. that. Done. We've done that. Right, fantastic. I'm off. Right, so listen, let's cut to the chase. Mm -hmm. Ant Middleton, SAS Who Dares Wins. I could never do it because I'm a complete weak idiot, right? Well, you could now because it's gone easy. It's nice and... Well, this is what <laughs> I'm going to... Wow! Let's cut to the... This is what the wife wanted me to ask you. What do you make of that American imposter with the flippy <laughs> air and the stupid... I'm not into him at all. We miss you, man. And all those friends of yours, they... are they still your mates? Yeah, do you know Ooh. what? Um, with the new chief instructor, um, tier four shouldn't mixed with tier one and nor should they have the privilege to um so that's as far as we go as as friendship um but with the other guys you know good luck to them the show's gone uh it's a reality show now so it's gone a bit a bit that way so they can pick and choose they can script it a bit more but with myself they couldn't do that well that's so, what i uh, that's what i was going to say because you said i was sacked because the woke patrol got mm -hmm. got into it now i've only just started watching it because victoria is obsessed right and here's what i'm going to say even i've sussed out they must know when the bag goes over there where they're now going that's completely <laughs> obvious to me right but more obvious is that every single person who's on that program has a backstory and they all come in and they all cry and suddenly these meatheads i don't mean to be disrespectful mm -hmm. sort of turn into I don't know, psychologists, yeah. and they go out going, oh, actually, I think she's all right, or he's all right. Is that fixed? Do you know what? When it first started, it was hardcore individuals, you know, that thought they had what it took yeah. to pass selection. So we put them through the mill. We didn't care who they were, what background they came from. It's interesting to know about their background, but ultimately, they were there to, to test themselves physically, psychologically, and emotionally. And we controlled the course because we've been through the process. Mm. But when you get a production company that tried to take that format and then control it from behind the scenes, it doesn't work. It, didn't, it doesn't seem as organic as I remember it being no. some time ago. It seems to be that... I mean, don't get me wrong, I, I, I don't really watch much telly, but I sort of thought, he's definitely going to be called to the room with the bag on his head. <laughs> he's definitely going to go home. She's going to be told shit. Do you know what I mean? Yes. And, it, and it's become a bit... Is it frustrating watching it? I know it's easy to sit there and go, mm. oh, listen, you know, I've moved on. Mm. Must be um, do you know what? It's, it's disappointing to see all that hard work sort of go out the window and sort of it to be transformed into something completely different to what it was meant to be. Um, but times move on, TV moves on, woke patrol comes in, political correctness has a, has a big play with everything, and then the whole format changes. And you know what? It's probably good for this day and age right now. You know, there's people like to, you know, hear about these sob stories, like to hear about what goes on in people's lives. So good luck to them. I'm out in Australia at the moment doing SAS Australia, which is keeping it authentic, keeping it real, keeping it tier one, you know, going through that mindset, going through that training and really putting them through the mill and allowing me to run a course that I've been through 
um, with the celebrities out in uh, Australia. So Having fun out there. Every, every cloud. So you're in Australia. Today I was on the streets of London, because one thing you talk about is the woke patrol have taken over the world. Mm. There was a, a local... This is terrible. It's a local government association pamphlet that went round to all local councils in the UK last week, and it said that they needed to avoid using certain words right. that would be disrespectful. And I guarantee you that this is not a lie. Uh, two of the words were mum and dad. Yeah, see, that's... So, I, uh, da, da, da. so take, this, is, this, is, this is what the people of the United Kingdom, what well, the streets of London today, and a slight drizzle, by the way, and I didn't take a coat. Have a listen to this. This is what they think. Mum and dad should be banned. I mean, it should be like birthing people. Thoughts, please, young modern people? No, that's really stupid. Yeah, agreed, stupid. <laughs> stupid. Is that because Charlotte said it or because you actually... No, I... I want to be called mum. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> and they want to ban the needy. You can't say somebody's needy because that's disrespectful. Mm, no, people have different sets of needs. That's OK. You can't use the words the needy. No. <laughs> Why? Because that disrespects people who are needy. Well, but if they're needy, they're needy. Expat <laughs> banned? <laughs> Silly. Do you think we're getting to a point where it's nuts? Yes. This is too much. It's, it's just all the time. It's just something wrong with something. Words are being banned through wokeness. What are your thoughts? Foolishness. It's foolishness. It's silly. Why would you do that? It would always be mum and dad, right? Of course, that's never going to change. What are you going to call them? Cat and dog? It's just silly. I'm just sorry. It's just silly. The world's gone nuts. What do you make of the wokeness of this world? No, it's getting too far, isn't it? Do you still call your mum mum, the one that was too scared to do it? Yeah. <laughs> you wouldn't call a birthing person who brought me into this world? No, because I would not. No, no she's her... my mum. Yeah, always yeah. will be. I yeah. thought you were sisters. <laughs> <laughs> but you see, what I don't get, Anne, is... If you go out and you ask those people, they all say it's nuts. Piers goes on about it, I go on about it. I haven't met anybody who thinks that's normal. What, yeah, what, ha why is it happening? Because the majority are silent. It's a minority that have a voice, unfortunately. And what I notice about these uh, absolutely insane comments from, from the woke is they're trying to suppress our vocabulary. When mm. you suppress our vocabulary, you suppress the way we think. When you mm. suppress the way we think, you suppress the way that we act. And ultimately, what you can do through fear, you can control that individual. Mm. That's what they're trying to do. They're trying to place us in a box, trying to place us in boxes so they can control us. And they're doing a good job about it. But when you look at it, it makes me think how many people out there, especially coming from the woke, and this is a serious matter, how many people suffer from mental health issues? Mm. Mental now, when you hear some people say you shouldn't be using the word mum and dad, even the question of what is a woman, you know, is that even a, why is that even a question? And when you get people that can't answer that question, it's so evident and it's so sad, and I must mention that it's so sad, that it's mental health issues being covered in plain sight. They're what using it, what it, it what to it manipulate does, I agree. narrative. And what it does for me is it somehow takes away the essence and importance of people who are really suffering genuinely. Now, listen, my exactly wife says that. you're the hardest man she's ever seen. She came yeah. and saw you at something. You were, you, you were stuck... Da yes, so to speak. Uh, da thank you, director. Don't get involved. Just point the camera. Uh, apparently, uh, you going down Everest, you got stuck. You're a complete hero. Mm -hmm. So somebody said to me, do you think you could take Ant Middleton on? And I went, yeah, I'll take him on. Right? I'll take him on at Concord. Shall I tell you why? Because... It was the World Conquer Championships this weekend in Melton Mowbray, famous for pies and that, right? Now, listen, so, these have been done... In... What, are you, what? Are you going first? I'm going to miss. It's going to be really embarrassing. Oh, I missed. Oh, I knew oh, I was going to. Look at that. Oh, the technique. Just done look, the technique. Knee. Hold on. The technique. My thing was too long. Go on. Oh! Right, no, come on, come on, come on. Right, come on, Jez. This is your moment. No, keep it still. Oh, Jez! <laughs> come on, come on. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Oh! Come on. oh. oh. Brilliant, fantastic. You're a legend, mate. Right, listen, good luck with the books. Really Thank good you. to see you. And if you, I'll come out to Australia. Do you think I could do it? Easy. Are you sure? Let's do it. Let's see, do it. he says I could do it.